All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Nielsen Seed's second webinar. I'd like to introduce Bill Busby, who is the other person in the screen here. He is the sales manager for Excite Biotechnologies out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, uh, who focus on biologicals uh, for crops. We have worked uh, with uh, Excite Bio Soirizo inoculant especially for about six years now, and we've been real happy with it. But today what we're going to talk about is a newer product called Yield Plus. And we're going to hear a little bit about from Bill what that can do for your crops and what issues we think we might be able to address with that. So we, I'll uh, hand it over to Bill here. And if there's anything I forgot in the introduction, Bill, please feel free to add to it. And uh, yeah, take it away. Sure. Thanks, Soren, and uh, thanks for the introduction. I think you covered everything off real well there. So welcome, everyone. We'll start the show here. So just a brief introduction to everyone about Excite Biotechnology. So we're a uh, Manitoba-based company. Our uh, innovation, research, and development laboratory and warehouse and production facility is all located in uh, Winnipeg, uh, Manitoba. This really allows us to do all our research and development in-house and develop everything locally. So we're not bringing anything in from, from overseas and it allows us to develop products that work well for uh, Western Canada. A um, little bit about Excite Bio. We've been in business for uh, 10 years this coming year and have had uh, commercial products available for six years. Our first product launch was uh, Pulse Rhizo and Soy Rhizo. And um, I'd just like to thank uh, Soren for his support right from the uh, from the get-go here. It's been really well appreciated. We uh, thank him for the opportunity today to speak to you about our, our latest product called uh, Yield Plus. So our warehousing uh, facilities are located in Winnipeg, as I said before, and they're a new state-of-the-art uh, facility designed specifically to manufacture and store biological products. And they were opened in the fall of 2017. Our company, we operate with full 14 full-time staff, both in Canada and the U.S. And roughly one of the questions we get is where most of our business occur. We do about one third of our business in Canada and two thirds down in the, the Northern United States. So what we're gonna to talk today about folks is, is really, uh, we've got a new, some new technology, but really we're talking about old technology. So one of the uh, buzzwords today in agriculture is you hear people talk about plant growth promoting rhizobacteria is it's there's something new and, and really they've been around for hundreds if not thousands of years and they're really um, what they are is any biological product that works in the rhizosphere. So the inoculants that you're using today such as soy rhizo is a PGPR and what we're going to talk about uh, in a few minutes is a new one called Yield Plus. And Yield Plus uh, is a PGPR which um, works in hormone production, they, it helps in nodulation and nutrient uptake, uh, cytophore production, and this particular one, Yield Plus, does not uh, do anything with biocontrol. So as the year progresses, you'll hear more and more about some products uh, that are PGPRs that work to control uh, nematodes in your soil, but uh, Yield Plus is not one of those. So Yield Plus it was, uh, is a patented PGPR. Um, the active ingredient is called Bacillus firmus. It uh, comes in a ready-to-use liquid formulation, and it's unique in that it's been designed to be very user friendly. So um, Yield Plus can be applied um, with your post-emergent uh, herbicides. We have a, a wide array of herbicides that it can be applied with and those can be found on our website. And it can also be applied in furrow with uh, liquid fertilizer or water. So Yield Plus is compatible with you know, commonly used products such as 2800, 1034, Alpine, um, any of your nature's products, Monty's plant food, et cetera. So um, it's quite a flexible product in that it can be applied in uh, with multiple products at multiple times throughout the year. The base technology in Yield Plus is the bacteria uh, solubilizes immobile phosphates in the soil um, that have been bound up. So phosphates that are tied up with calcium and aluminum, potassium type things, um, the bacteria uh, will release those. It also encourages the uh, development of cytophores in the soil, which are iron chelating agents, which are critical in pulse crops. And it also produces uh, phytohormones, which are 
important in a crop to develop a strong root system and boost plant performance throughout the season. So helping the crop overcome problems such as drought, uh, hail, insect damage um, is key to that. Um, Yield Plus was uh, commercially launched in late uh, winter of 2017. And we had a very successful year uh, this past year, 2018, with just over 100,000 acres out in Western Canada. And we also uh, completed 100 trials. So we've got a very good agronomic understanding of how to use the product, where it works, and how to make it um, agronomically feasible for everyone to go with. So we'll just jump into that. This picture here is what a, a bladder of Yield Plus looks like. It's a 10 liter bladder. It's enough to do 40 acres. So you apply it at uh, a quarter liter an acre. And again, it's tank mixable with your uh, most commonly used herbicides such as Roundup, Liberty, uh, Extendamax, Odyssey, any of your gaminicides or broadleafs in uh, wheat and cereals. Um, we want it to be applied uh, as early as possible in the zero to six. Uh, leaf stage and yield plus is registered on a multiple of crop the crops uh, that are growing in north america so canola corn wheat and barley corn peas lentils and soybeans is our target crops and we're currently uh, redeveloping the formulation of yield plus so it will come as a wettable powder which will now or which will be able to be used on seeds so Yield Plus, a uh, brief description of the product. Um, it's a bacteria. And the reason people say, why did we go with a bacteria is when you uh, look at your soil uh, microflora in there, approximately 93, 94% of the uh, living organism in your soil are based on bacteria. So with the environment being so competitive, if we were to base it around a fungi type product, um, funguses make up about one one thousandth of a percentage of the a microflora that exists in a soil, the bacteria in there will quickly overwhelm it. So you won't see season long uh, results and you won't have consistent results either. So we based it on a naturally occurring bacteria that um, will allow us to develop a very consistent product that'll work over a wide range of soils found in uh, North America. Again, the target with Yield Plus is the soil. Um, so we want to apply the product early at seeding or just after seeding uh, when we have at least 30% bare ground. So we don't want to apply uh, yield plus if the ground is covered with you know weeds or the crop started to canopy over. We want to go early when we have at least 30% uh, bare ground available for the uh, product to make soil contact. What we're targeting here is the stored phosphate in the soil. So we're looking at phosphates that are in the inorganic forms. So the iron phosphates, your aluminum phosphates, and your calcium phosphates is what uh, the Yield Plus bacterials will work on. With Yield Plus, people ask us when we spray it on top, how does it infect the roots? So the scientific word for it is chemotaxi. So what that means is Yield Plus will actually move in the water that's trapezing uh, soil uh, particles. And the bacteria actually seek out the excludes from roots to, uh, to infect. So it can actually move up to approximately one meter in the soil from where it's been applied to contact a root. I'm gonna show you a couple slides of that. This picture here is from Rugby, North Dakota in a cornfield. Um, we're working in conjunction with the University of North Dakota on this and one of the things everyone was looking at in this picture is how the corn is recovered from a hailstorm here and you can see on the left hand side of the picture the corn is growing quite vigorously and it's recovered quite nicely and on the right hand side of the, the screen here you'll see how that corn is is thin and is struggling and what the researcher was most interested in this or pointed out to us is the yield plus in this picture was applied with 2800 and a two by two band uh, beside the row of corn. And what he pointed out is if you look at the uh, kochia that's growing in this field, you'll see that it's approximately in the middle of uh, 30 inch row spacings here. And then it's also uh, been impacted by the yield plus as well. You can see it's growing much more lusher and much more vigorously. And, and when he looked at that, 
or did a tissue test on that kochia, we found it had higher concentrations of phosphate and potassium in it compared to the uh, kochia on the other untreated side, which just kind of shows you how far the, the bacteria will move in search of a, of a root system. Now, some people will think, hey, that's not good. We're promoting the growth of weeds here. But really what the weed scientists said, you know, it's easier to kill an actively growing weed versus a non-active weed here. So it's, it's, it's a positive. So. Bill, I got a question here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, is it best to apply uh, Yield Plus with a pre-seed herbicide if you can't do in furrow? If you can't do in furrow, um, the earlier what we want, the targets of soil uh, sore. And so the earlier you can go after seeding, uh, the better off you'll go. So we've seen some very good results with people using products like Authority or Valor, uh, Frontier Mass, Max, uh, things like that. So the earlier you can go, um, the better after seeding. Okay. Okay, but not pre-seed then. Pre-seed, you know, the, the risk you take with pre-seed is simply you don't know how long you're going to be from when you apply the product to when the crops actually in the ground and the bacteria need to find an active root source to, to live on. So okay. you, we wait a couple of weeks and there's nothing growing in that field, you know, it's, you know, a sterile seed bed. Um, you, you take the chance of risk of the product may not uh, work as well as expected. So okay, if going out after seeding, if you're going to do your burn off after you've seeded, that's, you know, ideal timing type of thing when, you know, the crop's just starting to come out, the bacteria will find those germinating seeds and infect them, and away you go. Um, okay. Here's just another picture here. Um, this was taken in Ontario and sent to us this year where uh, on a planter, the farmer had his manifold plug up on him and it just had, it was applying the yield plus in the outside row. And again, you can see how the soybeans have taken up the yield plus, they're much more vigorous. And you can also see how the pigweeds in the picture have, also been impacted by the uh, bacteria there so it is a quite a mobile um, bacteria in the soil and will search out and find roots to infect um, observations from 2018 so we had over 100 field trials applied in Canada and the US last year um, this is a combination of uh, independent researchers university and company initiated tests. And what we found is we had an 11% higher plant density. Um, root lengths had increased between four and 5% here. Um, one of the questions we often get is whether in furrow or post emergent is more effective with this product. And, and really statistically, they're not. Um, the biggest thing that we, we run into with a post emergent is applying too late and we don't get proper soil contact. So we just need to really reiterate that we need at least 30% bare ground there for the product to, to hit the soil and then be able to move down and impact roots is, is where we see the biggest variation. Um, tissue testing that we did over the summer showed a 10% increase in phosphorus, 15% increase in potassium, an 18% increase in iron, and a 43% increase in calcium over untreated uh, crops. So, so here's just a, a tissue test that was done in Minnesota last year in corn. And what we had here is a, a field with it's got a lot of calcium carbonate in it. And applying commercial phosphates, the farmer couldn't apply enough to uh, overcome his limiting yield factor was phosphate here. So in the untreated, you can see where it, uh, the phosphate is deficient in the corn. And with the treatment of yield plus, we've uh, increased it to low. So we moved it up approximately 10 parts per million. And when you look at the DRIS index, um, if you're unfamiliar with that, it's an index developed by AgVise Laboratories based out of North Dakota. They call it a Diagnostic recommend, Recommendation Integrated System. And really what it's doing is measuring where the bottleneck is in plant nutrition. So the lowest value is the most limiting. So if you're down at negative 30, you know, you're considered deficient between negative 15 and plus 15 you're considered adequate and anything over plus 15, it's luxury consumption. It's really the nutrient at that point isn't doing anything to add to yield. So if you look at this particular case here, um, with the corn, we raised it from a drift value of negative 36, which is considered deficient, up to minus 19. So it's, it's on the high end of the low scale. And really what did that mean to this 
a particular farmer that was about a 15 bushel increase in corn and really it just can be attributed to proper foster or improved uh, phosphate nutrition. Here's a different field again. And in this field here, what we were looking for was the farmer was having trouble with IDC and what he'd been doing in this field, it had a history of turkey litter being applied to it. So it had lots of phosphorus in it. And you can see here where we've taken the phosphor, it was already considered high and moved it up into the high range. And on your iron, um, we were able to move it up approximately uh, 15 to 20% here um, in hopes of helping alleve, alleviate some IDC issues. And you can see here on the DRIS index on uh, the phosphate, it was already adequate. We moved it up into luxury feeding, so adding more phosphate to this crop wouldn't help. What's interesting here is on the DRIS index, there really isn't a scale for it for iron. And the reason for that is with IDC, it's a multifaceted problem. Um, you know, it really starts with variety selection. And a number of people have asked, well, you know, adding yield plus to my soybeans um, help them with IDC or, or is it the silver bullet? And no, it's, it's, it's one of the things, management tools for IDC, but it's not necessarily going to take a poor variety and raise it up to a good variety. But what it will help is a, variety with a good IDC rating, it'll help it overcome um, issues with IDC much quicker and lessen the, the severity of the uh, IDC in that particular crop. So it will release iron, but on its own, um, it's not gonna help a poor variety become a good variety, but it will help a, a variety with a decent IDC scale rating uh, become better. In terms of impact on corn yields, um, you know, with yield plus, we'll see about a six bushel an acre increase over five years of trialing. Some of the questions we had is yield plus, how do we compare it to products like uh, Jumpstart and Quick Roots? Um, this is a trial done in uh, Chatham, Ontario. And you can see here um, the untreated controls at 244 bushels an acre. The, uh, Jumpstart and quick roots was at 243, and your yield plus uh, came in at 251. So we had a nice increase over the uh, jumpstart and quick roots, and this is something that we see replicated uh, very often with corn: is that our, our yield increases are, are we average about six bushels an acre, but they're very consistent as their impact on a corn crop. Just a picture of the uh, what you can expect to see with roots in corn. You can see a much more vigorous roots. They're more advanced um, compared to the untreated uh, corn. So again, we're promoting a healthier root system that's going to develop faster and earlier in, during the season, which uh, helps crop overcome abiotic stresses such as drought or insect damage throughout the growing year. With canola, um, what you'll see with canola here is we have a very consistent uh, response of uh, around 7% yield increase over uh, five years of trialing. And as we go forward with canola, we'll talk a little bit more about that and, and what it actually does for the crop. And here we see a uh, trial done this year at Liberty, Saskatchewan uh, in furrow, where we had a three and a half bushel increase. And just a picture, it came out of uh, the Ag Proof uh, trials here and you can just see the extra biomass in the treated canola on the left hand side of the pickup truck tailgate here versus the untreated here so you're going to see just a, a thicker more robust plant uh, being produced when you're using yield plus and canola. One of the things that farmers talk about with yield plus is not only do we deliver a consistent yield increase of you know roughly seven to eight percent um, is we're also promoting earlier flowering and earlier maturity in your canola. And you can see in this picture, if you look on the left-hand side toward the row of trees, you can see that canola is still blooming. Or on the right-hand side, the canola is finishing up blooming. It's about uh, five to seven days more advanced um, yield plus treated stuff, which this past year uh, resulted in some significant gains here. Um, right here, you'll see that in this field, they had a Frost come on September 3rd. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see the yield plus treated seed 
It's nice and black, it's mature, it graded to one Canada. And on the right hand side, um, you'll see the canola um, was impacted by the frost. So there's green seed locked into it and, and that canola graded to number three. So that in itself was a significant uh, financial gain for the farmer. And just a testimonial from this grower here where he's talking about his canola matured five to seven days earlier. And really one of the things he made a comment was make sure that if you're uh, applying yield plus that you put it toward the uh, easiest access point in the field if you're gonna do a trial so that you can get to it and swath it uh, on time here instead of waiting for the other stuff to catch up. Wheat and barley, yield plus is very has very consistent results in wheat and barley similar to uh, corn. Um, You'll see a, a yield increase in wheat and barley, approximately five to seven percent over the untreated uh, crops. Um, with wheat, I guess some of the questions we had are, is in regards to protein levels and do we increase protein levels? And it's so far the last couple of years, it's been inconclusive on that. Some of that's due to, I think, differences in varieties and types of wheat here. Some of them we have a larger impact on yield. Um, you know, if you look at some of the utility wheats. So um, if you're looking for more specific information, I think reach out to your Excite Bio reps and we can go through and look at some uh, specific tests on different varieties and different classes of wheat to, uh, to show you there how it'll work. On barley, again, very consistent yield increase there. Um, you're looking on the high sevens, 8% yield bumps here and again. Um, on the protein, we haven't seen anything, whether it's lower or higher on it. It seems to be fairly consistent with the untreated. Just getting a few more bushels. With pulses, um, soybeans, we generally look at a two to three bushel yield advantage. Um, lentils, we're down, you know, two to three again, and peas can be uh, closer to four or five bushel average increase on it. And just a picture here of uh, legumes, a uh, picture of peas at Birch Hill, Saskatchewan. And if you look on the uh, left-hand side of that uh, flag there, you see the peas are much more advanced. Uh, they filled in a lot more compared to the peas on the right-hand side. And when you actually go in there and pull some of those pea plants, um, you'll see the peas treated with yield plus are again a week to seven or 10 days ahead of the untreated. Um, Peas have started to put on pods or flowering, and the untreated stuff is, is just starting to uh, go into the reproductive stages. And again, uh, just a summary of Yield Plus here. It's uh, registered on a multiple broad acre crops, which we will continue to expand that label. So our crops that we're currently registered on are canola, uh, corn, wheat, and barley, soybeans, peas, and lentils. And stay tuned over the winter. We've will more than likely be adding uh, more crops to it. It's a patented uh, plant growth promoting rhizobacteria. Uh, the active ingredient is a Bacillus firmus. It's very easy to apply. It's designed to be uh, very user friendly. So we have a unique uh, application met methods that can go on with your uh, herbicide of choice or it can be applied in furrow with liquid fertilizer or water. Yield Plus will add to your bottom line by, you know, the standard increasing yield, um, aiding crops and overcoming in-season stress events such as drought or insect damage, hail. And it also uh, has shown the potential to increase days to maturity, which can result in increased quality or reducing your drying costs. With that, I'd just like to thank everyone for your time and open the floor up to any questions. Soren? Thanks, Bill. Yeah, we got a couple of questions come in here. Um, first of all, where do you feel Yield Plus uh, has the best bang for its buck? Which commodity have you seen the best results on? I, you know, really, that's a good question, Soren. And, you know, I get that all the time. I think, you know, obviously your oil seeds, you know, just with the price of them and the yield increase will, will offer um, a very strong ROI. But I think some of the things you'll see with corn, um, as well with, you know, reduced days to maturity, um, things like that. If you can reduce your drying costs in that particular crop, that can add more to the bottom line than the, uh, 
the actual extra bushels you'll grow. But as as a rule, your oil seeds, corn, soybeans will will add the you know the most to it. Um, some of the other things you'll see is like in wheat and barley. Um, you know, depending on what grade you get, of course, that can add if you get malt barley or high protein milling wheat. I mean, the returns can be there as well. And you, you know, in wheat and barley, I guess what I didn't mention earlier is quite often producers will say they have less lodging, so just that ability to handle the crop easier um, could add to your bottom line as well if you're not trying to deal with the lodge crops. So, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, all right. Um, so, how does this product compare to BioBoost? It's a good question. With so they're both. Um, if people follow us, they're both been developed by the founder of our company, Manus Banerjee. So BioBoost, that was Manus's uh, first product that he developed here approximately 20 years ago. And Yield Plus is really the second generation of those PGPRs that he's been working on. And the main difference is BioBoost is, as far as I know, is currently only registered in canola and it's a sulfur uh, releasing bacteria for canola where Yield Plus is focused on um, releasing uh, phosphorus for, you know, basically all broad acre crops. In addition to releasing phosphorus, um, Yield Plus will release other macronutrients such as potassium, iron, and calcium. And it also um, releases phytohormones in, for crops, which is going to aid them in overcoming abiotic stresses as well. So it's doing a multiple of things versus, um, you know, just wild boost is basically just working on sulfur oxidation for plants. So. Okay, so that'd be quite two different products then. Yeah, it is. Yeah, they're two different things. Yeah, really focused yeah. on, you know, two different nutrients and, and you know, with Yield Plus, you're, we're focused on basically all the broad acre crops that are available. Yeah. Yeah. And for the area that we're sitting in here today, anyway, uh, phosphorus is almost top priority because we're we find ourselves deficient uh, year in and year out. Yeah. So, so there is a lot of uh, foliar products on the market. What makes this one better than others from competitors? I think the, there's a number. That's a great question, Sora. And I think what makes it where we stand apart from competitors and I'm just going to talk more on a North American basis here on this, this okay. state, but we've been registered both by the CFIA and the PMRA, which a number of our competitors have not been. So there's a number of things out there that a farmer can buy that claim to do these different biological things in there, which have not been through the, the scrutiny of our re registration process in Canada, which we spent you know four to five years doing um we're successful with that and a number of our competitors have not went through that yet to become registered so okay it goes through and i think the other another major thing is our technology um with the bacillus firmus uh bacteria is known throughout you know the agriculture the biological world and the world in general as a bacteria that can deliver very consistent results um, you know, some of the multinationals are using it now. If you look at Bayer Crop Science, um, they're adding it into their uh, seed treatments to control uh, nematodes in the U.S. So it's a very active bacteria, and it's native to North America. So it's going to going to produce very consistent results. So we're not trying to add something foreign to our soils. It's already there. We're just really trying to improve um, the health of our soil by adding a you know, increasing concentration of a bacteria that is already there. So it's it's one of the big reasons why it uh, is different than, you know, some of the other stuff that when you try and add something foreign into a soil, into that very competitive micro environment, um, the chances of that introduced uh, fungus or bacteria that isn't native surviving and producing an actual tangible result uh, consistently is relatively low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think that uh, answers the questions we had come in here. Okay. You have anything you'd like to add, Bill? No, I think uh, if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to your local Excite Bio rep or myself. And I guess 
thank you for your time. I so I appreciate the opportunity to, to meet with yourself and your customers. No, thank you, Bill, for taking the time to do this little webinar with us. This recording will be up on our website here shortly. So in case uh, somebody missed it, they can always go in and have a look at it again. And uh, yeah, I think we'll say thank you for today and uh, stay tuned for the next webinar. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Yeah.